The Easy Gourmet is sponsored by The Scoreboard Sports Bar and Grill. Come visit us at 15 Middlesex Canal Park in Woburn, 781-897-4000. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Easy Gourmet. I'm your host and chef Vinny Felici. Today we're going to be doing, uh, it's the pizza show. We're going to be doing uh, something called pizza margarita which is tomatoes, fresh mozzarella and basil. And then we're going to do a grilled salad. Yes, you heard right. We're going to actually grill part of the salad and then we're going to add regular, uh, we're going to add arugula to the grilled components. And there's going to be some goat cheese in there. It's going to be wonderful. And then for dessert, we're getting back to the pizza theme again. We're going to have some pizza dough that's fried and we're going to coat that with a little bit of um, powdered sugar and some honey. So why don't we get started. The first thing we want to do is we want to have a uh, pizza stone in our oven on the highest rack. As you can see that on the highest rack and I have it on 550. The highest that this stove goes is 550. I wish it would go a little bit higher but 550 or higher. The highest that setting that it can go you want to preheat that for at least a half hour. So that's been on right now for maybe a little over a half hour. And uh, since this is the Easy Gourmet, we're going to be using ready-made dough today. So what we want to do is we want to get our dough, which this is uh, supermarket dough, and it's about a pound. This will make about a 12-inch pizza. You can always cut it in half and make a couple of smaller ones, but the stone we're using today is about 12 inches, so we're going to make a 12-inch pizza. So what we want to do is we need a lot of flour for this so things don't stick. So flour up a board or flour up your pastry marble, whatever you happen to have handy. Even on top of Formica is fine. And just start pressing it out with your fingers. What I like to do, this I just took this out of the refrigerator. I like to work with cold dough. It's easy to work with and easier to stretch out because the gluten in the flour is not binding. Once you start to work this, you'll feel it start to pull back. That means you're activating the gluten in the flour. So what we want to do is we want to just kind of get that, get that out to about a foot or so. And don't be afraid. I'm not going to toss it up in the air, but it's all fingertips. Just make sure both sides are floured. You can use a rolling pin for this if you'd like, but I'm going to go all natural here and just use my fingers. And I do have a ruler here to measure when it's close to uh, you can turn it over and work it again. Just work, work from the inside out, pushing all that thick dough to the outside to make the circumference of the pizza dough to at least about, like I said, you want to go 12 inches. This happens to be a 12 inch stone. If you're using a smaller stone, you may want to remove some of this dough because you won't, your crust won't be as crispy. So you may want to remove, this is a pound, you may want to remove about a quarter of it if your stone is smaller. Then again, as I said, you can make uh, two smaller pizzas. You can start to stretch that a little bit. As you can see, the inside of the dough, or the middle of the dough is skinny now. You just want to bring that out to the a little more flour to about a foot. Don't be afraid to work it and stretch it. It's not going to hurt anything. And just get your ruler to get a rough idea. That's about a foot. Then create a nice edge. Put one hand on your board and just use your finger and spin the pizza and you get a nice edge. I wish you were here to feel this because this dough is extremely cold and it's working really, really nicely. I 
and that's all you have to do. Just check it a couple more time. That's about a foot. And I have my trusty pizza board. And what you want to do is you need a little bit of cornmeal on that, so that way your dough will slide off easily. Just a little bit of cornmeal. That's kind of like ball bearings. They're very, very small little round pieces of cornmeal, and that pizza will slide off to the stone, off the stone, onto the stone, very easy. Okay, we're just going to put that aside for now. We're going to make up a little bit of topping for that. So what we want to do first is get our pan heated up. We're going to make a quick sauce. We're going to use some fresh tomatoes. Put that on medium. And for about a 12 inch pizza you probably want five to six tomatoes. Plum tomatoes are good. And just slice those in about quarter, quarter, quarter inch pieces. Get rid of the ends. They don't look as nice. That doesn't look that great. Just uh, these have been washed already. I'm going to leave the skins on. Of course you can use tomato sauce. You can use your favorite sauce. Use whatever you like. But I'm going to just show you quickly how to how to make a uh, just a quick a quick uh, kind of sauce that only takes about five minutes or so. Maybe one more, one more. Get rid of the bottoms. Put those off to the side. We need a couple, but a clove of garlic. And you don't have to be too crazy here. Just kind of uh, rough chop. Maybe we'll go for another one. Make sure, again, when you uh, smash the garlic on your knife, make sure that the sharp part of the blade is away from you. And just give that a rough chop. A little bit of oil in your pan. Should be preheated by now. About, uh, just till the bottom is lightly covered. Probably talking about two or three tablespoons. This is just a light olive oil. And put your garlic in. Just sweat that a little bit to get some of the oils out of the garlic into the oil. Be careful that your pan isn't too hot or the garlic's going to burn. And toss your tomatoes in. And you want a little bit of basil. Unfortunately, this is the last basil of the season, but any basil from the supermarket or anything that you can find that's hydroponic is fine. But at least have some fresh basil. You can use dried herbs, and I've said many times on the show, they're not as good as uh, fresh herbs, whether they're grown hydroponically or grown, grown uh, locally or whatever. It just gives you a little more freshness to the dish. I'm going to add a little more garlic at the end, uh, a little, sorry, a little more uh, basil at the end so I still have that freshness because some of the basil flavor will get, will dissipate into the, uh, into the tomatoes. You want about five to ten minutes here. Maybe I'm just going to raise the heat just a little. And, and once you see these start to break down is when you want to take these off. So get a single layer in your pan. See how that's just one layer? They're not all on top of each other. And just kind of let those cook. And we'll be turning those in a minute or so. So like I said, five to ten minutes should be enough. So as I said, five to ten minutes on this. A little bit of salt, kosher salt. Just eyeball it. A little bit of fresh black pepper.
And I'm going to take those off in about 30 seconds or so. But I just do, I do want to add, I do want to add another blast of um, fresh basil. And I think that's it. That was it. How long did that take? That was about that was about five minutes. Okay, now we're gonna dress our pizza. Just let me take care of the board. Okay, we have our pizza ready here to go. And you can just dress it up. Uh, I don't know exactly the historical part behind this, but the, oops, let me get rid of that. The historical part of this, I guess, is the pizza margarita is the, some king someplace along the line made this for Queen Margarita and it became the official pizza of Italy because it's the green, the red of the tomato, the green of the basil, the red of the tomato, and then the white of the cheese are the colors of the Italian flag. But someone's going to have to look that up on Wiki because I'm not exactly sure if that's the real story. I'll tell you, this smells really, really good. And don't waste anything. There's a little bit of sauce in here. Just put that all around. If you want to add a little bit more fresh garlic to this, you could slice it really thin because you want it to cook, uh, you want to make sure it cooks and the oven is on 550 to 600 degrees, so if the garlic is too thick, it'll come out raw, so make sure you kind of slice it paper thin if you want a little extra on here. Um, I'm going to use, for this particular recipe, I'm going to use uh, white mozzarella. I like this. I think it melts really good. It's very creamy. If you want to use the regular mozzarella, the hard mozzarella, I recommend that you uh, don't use the uh, already pre-sliced mozzarella. Use the mozzarella that's in a, it's in a ball like this or in a chunk and grate that on a cheese grater. Some of the uh, pre-grated cheeses have uh, additives to them to prevent caking and, and the, to me the cheese doesn't melt as good. So uh, um, that's just a suggestion but I, I do like the uh, white mozzarella. I think it's, I think it, like I say, it melts really well and I think it's much creamier and I think it's great on a pizza. And this, this one already happens to be pre-sliced. So you can just put those Break those up. And put them on the way you want. It's always chef's choice, as you know, with the easy gourmet. And you don't want to like go too, too crazy with cheese. This package is about a pound or uh, 12 ounces, I'm probably going to use half. And that's all you have to do. I'm going to finish it off with a little uh, Parmesan cheese. I think I'm going to add a little bit more black pepper because it's my pizza. And I'm going to add just a little bit of olive oil to finish it off. And we're ready to go. We are ready to go. Again, as I said, at least a half hour on the highest setting on bake that you have in your oven. Pizza stone on the top shelf, the highest that your oven goes.
and just slip that right on. As you can see, it slips right off with the... Make sure you put that back into the middle. And we should be ready in about eight to 10 minutes. Our next course is gonna be a grilled salad. I'm gonna grill that on the grill, which I already have preheated out in my deck. But you can use a grill pan for this recipe, or you could just do it under the broiler. So what we wanna do is, I already have two hearts of romaine lettuce uh, washed and dried and cut in half. One Belgian endive rinsed and cut in half. Um, one bulb of radicchio, which is a kind of a, looks like red cabbage, but cabbage, but it's kind of a bitter lettuce. Not extremely bitter, but has a little bit of a bite to it. And I'm just gonna cut that in half. I'm gonna grill that also. And this salad actually is called uh, grilled hot and cold salad with ghost cheese. So we're gonna put the whole, all the grilled ingredients into a bowl with goat cheese and then we're going to add another cold ingredient to it. But you'll see how it goes. You'll see what it looks like as we go along. I have a red and, uh, uh, red and orange pepper. You can use green if you'd like or you can uh, just use all green or all red or all orange, whatever you like. I like the colored peppers. They're, they're much sweeter than the green ones so I'm going to leave the, I do have a few green but I'm going to leave the green out today. So I just want to take the top of the pepper off remove the uh, inside and just kind of quarter that same with the red pepper and you can toss those, those will look as nice and just quarter that. We don't want to make these too small right now because they could fall through the grates. We're going to be cutting these later to make them bite size. But when you grill them, you want to have them at about a quarter of the size of the pepper, a quarter of them that way. As I say, they won't have any chance of falling through the grate. Let me get rid of that. I have a Vidalia onion. Years ago, you could only get Vidalia onions in the spring. Now you can get them all year round. So we want to take that and cut this up. Just get the outside skin off. Get rid of those. And be careful when you do this. Always maybe when you're going to uh, cut something that's round, get it, lay it on a flat surface like that so it's a little easier. And just make a couple of circles. And that's all you gotta do. Now we're just gonna put a little bit of oil in all this, a little bit of light olive oil or vegetable oil, whatever you like to use. We're gonna make a quick dressing with olive oil, but you don't have to necessarily grill this with olive oil. You can just use any oil you want. But I think olive, when it gets a little burnt on the grill, it actually has a, a very, very nice taste. The flavors are kind of released more on them. And just do that. And before we go out to the grill, let's just check our pizza. It's been in there for about six or seven minutes. You just want to give a check. I think I'm going to leave it in just for one more minute, just to see if I can get this a little darker. But I think it's, I think it's 99% ready. So why don't we just go one more minute. That'll give me a chance to set up a tray to let it cool. I like to cool it on a rack. That way the air, it cools off uh, all at the same rate. If you lay it on a cutting board or on a flat surface, the steam will come back into the pizza and soften the crust. So a cookie, a cookie rack is fine or anything Anything that you have laying around is good. And I think we might be all set. Let's take another look. Oh, looks beautiful. Looks beautiful. So I just slip that back onto your board.
and slip that onto a cookie sheet, a cookie uh, cooler. That way the uh, steam doesn't go back into the crust and it'll keep the crust nice and crusty. Slip that back in. Be sure you let that cool down before you take it out of your oven because it's 500 degrees. And I like to just finish this off with a little bit of extra basil. And there you have it. Pizza margarita, easy gourmet style. Okay, now for our next recipe, we're halfway there. We have our radicchio, we have our Vidalia onions, we have our Bel Belgian endive, our red pepper, our romaine lettuce, and our yellow pepper, orange pepper. So why don't we go out to the grill, grill these, we'll come back, and I'll show you how to put the salad together. Okay, so we have all our vegetables. Our grill is preheated to high. And I just want to make sure all the debris is off. And place those over the grill. This isn't going to grill too long. Just enough to put a char in everything. Of course, some things, the peppers will take a little longer than the romaine lettuce. And the radicchio won't take that long either. We're going to grill these with the hood up that way. Uh, nothing will have a chance of burning. I don't know if you can see this. Grill marks have started already. Just kind of want to rotate those a little. Actually, they really probably doesn't make much difference with the grill marks since we're going to be cutting things up, but they always make a nice presentation if you're not going to cut them up right away. Make sure things aren't sticking. And you just want to keep your eye on this to make sure all you're trying to do is get a little burn on it, a little smokiness to it. You don't want to uh, completely wilt it to, uh, you want, still want a little crunch left. And we'll just let those cook. As I said before in the kitchen, this can be done under the broiler. Uh, I've done it under the broiler on a rainy day. It can be done in a grill pan, the grill pan that has the little bumps in it. You might have to do that in batches because a lot of the grill pans aren't uh, that large. Unless you have one of those rectangular uh, griddles that has, uh, uh, that has uh, grates, uh, that has bumps on them, you can, you can use that also. So this, uh, you don't always have to do it on the grill, but the grill gives it a nice smoky char taste that you can't get by broiling or uh, using the grill pan. So that's why I like to do this if I have a chance. And you just kind of want to wilt these a little till you, know, you don't want to go too much. You still want some crunch left in there. Like I said, the, the, um, the peppers and the onion is going to take the longest. I brought out a clean tray so we don't cross-contaminate. And I think these are probably ready to come off. So the endive is ready. The romaine is ready. I 
and I think the onions and the peppers can use a little more. Now we can close the cover and those will cook a little faster. And we can wait a few minutes till that cooks. I think we're close to being done on these. The onions are ready. And I think I'm, go I'm going to uh, go another five minutes on the uh, peppers. Okay. I think we're good. We're about halfway cooked. That's what we want because we still want some crunch left. So we'll take those off. And we are ready to assemble our salad. So we are back from our grill and uh, all our vegetables are nicely charred as you can see. Not completely cooked through but just enough to give it some smoky taste and um, wilt them just slightly. So as they're warm now, they're hot right off the grill, we want about uh, four ounces of goat cheese. You can use feta cheese for this but I like goat, gives a dish a nice uh, component goat's cheese and then slice, you have to have asbestos fingers for this, slice every, all the hot ingredients and put those, put that on top of the goat's cheese so it, it helps in melting it. So you may have to work with your fingertips but get, get all your peppers into bite sized pieces. your onions. And one last pepper. Get those in there. You can double stack these if you want to be a little daring. Make sure your knife is sharp. And take the root uh, part off the uh, romaine and just cut those and put those in. You can eat the root, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a little sour or kind of bitter. I think it's bitter is the right, the right word. Just toss those in. A little bit of radicchio, a little bit of Belgian endive. There's a little root on the endive that I previously had cut off, but you can trim more off if you'd like. But I always leave the root on when I grill it so it doesn't, it's a little easier to handle when you get it off the grill. And one more and dive. That and mix that up so that goat cheese melts. If you want to use a little less goat cheese, you can use a little less. If you want to use a little more, you can use a little more. As I said, you can use feta cheese, blue cheese, gorgonzola, something that melts that has body to it, that has a little bit of earthiness to it. That's the kind of cheese you want for this particular recipe. And, but ghost cheese, as you can see, is like very creamy as it melts into the components here. And how you want to finish this off, I have some washed and dried baby arugula. Arugula, as we had on a couple of previous programs, is kind of peppery, but it has a nice little bite to it and it has a nice balance to the sweetness of the rest of the, some of the other components. The sweetness of the peppers, the sweetness of the onions, the bitterness of the endive, the bitterness of the radicchio, and this has a little bit of a peppery kind of uh, thing that goes with. So do that, mix that together. Now just a simple dressing, a little pepper, it's not really a dressing, it's just another coating. A little more salt, actually we didn't salt it at all so put, put some salt in as much as you'd like. A little bit of olive oil 
and just mix that. And that's it. Goat cheese grilled salad with, uh, with arugula. Our last recipe today is going to be some uh, pizza fried dough. That's going to be our dessert uh, today. What we want to do first is get a uh, well, wide body pan so we can fit a bunch of them in there. About medium high. And once that heats up we're going to be putting vegetable oil in there. And we're going to fry we're going to fry some dough. Basically we're going to fry some dough. So we're going to get another pizza dough that we have here. And this time we, we kind of want our dough to be about a quarter of an inch thick. So we need a little bit of flour on our board or our marble stone, whatever you have available. We're going to use a rolling pin for this. It's much easier. Flour your rolling pin so the dough doesn't stick to it. I think you all know that though. And you just kind of want to roll that out. To about a quarter of an inch. Quarter inch square. If you don't know what a quarter inch is, you trust the plastic ruler, and that's about a quarter of an inch, maybe just a little bit more. And that's all. Just let that rest for a minute. Let me just wash my hands quick. So what we want to do is we want to get our pan hot, like I said, about medium high. Um, I'm not going to use a thermometer, but I guess if you would use a thermometer, about 350 to 375 is what we want to fry these in. And I have uh, some vegetable oil. You can use vegetable canola. I think olive oil is a little too uh, heavy for this, even the light olive oil. It can't take that high a heat that long, so I think you're better off with a uh, canola or a vegetable and get about a half inch of oil in here, maybe a little more. Depends how big your pot is. You can use a smaller pot, but I wanted to do a bunch of them at once. And we want that to let that heat up. That's going to take about uh, three to five minutes. And why don't we just check this to see how this is doing. Just make sure, again, as I said, it's about a quarter of an inch. If you go a little more than a quarter, the dough won't cook as well, and uh, the inside won't be as cooked as you would like it. It'll be kind of, well, doughy. It'll be kind of doughy. So just try to leave it at a quarter of an inch. So again, let's just check our dough here one more time to make sure it's a quarter of an inch. And it is. Then we just want to cut some rectangles. Get rid of that for now. Our oil should be nice and hot. You can make them any size you want. I'm going to go with like a three inch by three inch, give or take, rough, roughly. And all you want to do is just drop these into the hot oil. Don't overcrowd the pan. If you got a pan like this, you could probably go with six to eight. And keep your eye on them when you're deep frying. You can use a little, if you have a mini fry later, you can use that also for this recipe. I happen to have one of the uh, Chinese spiders. You can use this or use whatever you want to turn them. And just let those cook till they're brown and they're puffy. Okay, so um, after they turn slightly brown, you can turn those over. Once in a while, you're going to get one that's kind of blows up like that. Don't worry about it. There 
And you want a couple of minutes on each side. On this side also. You don't have to get too fancy here. You could, if you had like a uh, dough punch or a cookie cutter, you could make little circles instead of rectangles. I mean, you can, this is kind of, you can get a little creative with this if you want, but we're not going to get too creative today. Just enough that I can show all your viewers uh, what you can do with leftover pizza dough or just pizza dough in general. You could also, once these came off and cooled down slightly, you could pipe in some jam if you wanted to do that, some strawberry jam or some apricot jam and make a nice real dessert out of it. Put a little ice cream on the side. I think these are ready to go. As you can see, I have a, another cookie, sh cookie rack here to let the excess oil drip off. These ones that puffed up would be nice to get some jam inside those. Plenty of room for jam. And I think that's all we're going to do for now, so I'll just shut the heat down. All you want to do is, while they're hot, just a little bit of powdered sugar. If you really wanted to get a little intense, you could just put a little bit of honey on top. And that's all you have to do. And there's our quick dessert. Pizza fried dough. So, to recap today, we had the margarita pizza, which we made a little bit of a quick sauce with uh, Tomatoes, plum tomatoes, uh, a little bit of fresh basil and some garlic. All we did was cook that for about five to eight minutes over medium to high heat just to soften the tomatoes. And we used uh, the white, uh, white mozzarella uh, that we used instead of the uh, shredded mozzarella. I love the white. It's much more creamier. And we, then we finished it off after it came out of the oven with some fresh basil. The grilled salad with the uh, arugula and goat's cheese. Uh, we did that out in the grill today and uh, I know you're going to really like this and as I said uh, just to reiterate you can do it under the broiler and or you can do it with a grill pan or a, or a grill uh, a griddle that has the bumps on it to give, give it that uh, that b little bit of a burn on it that gives it that nice smoky taste uh, after you get the salad together and we just made a simple dressing of a little bit of oil salt and pepper you could put a little balsamic vinegar on that if you'd like and then we just fried up a little bit of uh, leftover dough um, to uh, finish the whole uh, meal off. And um, this pizza, uh, it really goes great with a, uh, like a Zinfandel or, uh, or a uh, cab because it's, uh, it's very hearty. And I happen to have one here today <laughs> that, uh, that I really like that goes with this. It's Bogle's Phantom. It's, a, uh, it's an old vine from uh, Petit Sera from California, and I think it, go, it pairs up really well with this pizza and with the salad, with the grilled salad. And I guess that's it for today's show. I guess that's it for today's show. I hope you uh, enjoy, will enjoy watching it as much as I enjoyed cooking these uh, for you today. Um, again, if... Uh, I haven't really checked the website, but there is a website for the show. It's uh, wpmceasygourmet at gmail.com. I will get around to doing that. I've just been so busy, but I will get around to doing that. And if any of the viewers have any questions or any comments, I'll be glad to uh, answer those. And uh, as usual, I'd like to thank uh, the scoreboard uh, for uh, making uh, the show possible today. So without further delay, I'd just like to wish everybody a good day and happy cooking. The Easy Gourmet is sponsored by The Scoreboard Sports Bar and Grill. Come visit us at 15 Middlesex Canal Park in Woburn, 781-897-4000.